हेलो एंड वेलकम यू ऑल टू ब्रांड न्यू वीडियो ऑफ योर चैनल लर्न इट हेलो एवरीबॉडी एंड वेलकम टू योर चैनल लर्न इट टुडे विल बी टेकिंग टॉपिक टू ऑफ सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स बिफोर मूविंग फॉरवर्ड इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इन विच वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द मेल रिप्रोडक्टिव पार्ट विच इज अबाउट द एंथर विच इज अ सब यूनिट ऑफ स्टेम इन so please go and watch from the playlist of 11th class for the clear understanding of this topic now we'll be moving on to our first topic which is the female reproductive unit and this unit is also called as pistil and also carpel this both name has been determined for this female reproductive unit that is the pistil and the carpel pistil is also denoted by one more name which is known as gynoecium which is the female reproductive unit of a flowering plant now let us see in the diagram on the right side of your screen there is the diagram of female reproductive unit which is also known as pistil gynoecium or carpel it basically has three units which is the stigma style and ovary let us start from the topmost thing which is known as stigma it is the part that receives the pollen grains from the anthers of the male reproductive unit the second is style which is connected to the stigma to the ovary which means it is a connection link between stigma and the ovary and in ovaries there will be ovules present now what is ovary is ovary is just a swollen region present at the base and ovary contain one to several ovules depending on the type of flower it is as anther contains microspores ovule will contain megasporangium which is surrounded by integuments and will fertilize the ovule and then ripens into a seed it is oval and whitish we'll discussing these megasporangium in our next topics it also contains nucellus which is the actual part equivalent to megasporangium and is parenchymatous containing and it is thin and massive when the nucellus is thin it is called as tenu nucleated example composite family and when the nucleus is massive it is called as crassy nucleate example casurnes family so now let us discuss first about the structures of the pistil and the ovule now pistil is the full female reproductive part and ovule is a part of pistil so first let us have a look at pistil pistil is basically divided into three parts stigma style and ovary that we know about in the first topic itself so let us discuss ovary in detail the two structures or the two diagrams the one is in erect position and second one is in inverted positions and the second image is just the enlarged image of ovule from the first part but in first image it is in erect form and in second it is just the inverted form so you will see all the things but it is upside down so when we are looking at ovule it has many parts basically one thing it is covered with or it is secured with is known as integuments with the help of integuments none of the material can enter these ovary or ovules so secondly it has two ends the one which is open side is known as micropylar end from which the pollen grains will enter or the male sex gametes will enter and on the second side it is known as the chalazal end now when we are going inside the cell it has basically eight celled now the three cells on the top are known as egg cells the three cells on the bottom is known as antipodal cells and in between there are two cells which are known as polar nuclei so it is the basic total structure of pistil and detailed version of ovule so now on the basis of integuments ovules are divided into four basic types the first is known as unitegmic in this only one integument is present and it is only present in higher dicots it is basically seen in higher dicot plants like composite and gymnosperms 
the diagram has been given in the screen the second is bitagmic or bitagmic in which as the name suggests bi means two it contains two integuments around the ovules and it is mainly seen in monocot which is the right side diagram on the screen and these are also present in primitive dicots like crucifer and melvesi the third is tritagmic which means three integuments present around the nucleus as in asphodelus the last one is known as atagmic which is without the integument which means the nucleus is not covered with any of the integument and this is seen in centellum loranthus zeriosoma and olex so now let us study the diagram in detail and talk about the chalaza now what is the chalaza it is the basic or the place of origin of the integuments from which the integuments which is of four types originates the second end is known as micropylar end it is a pore or a hole present in the integument on the opposite side of chalazal end which helps in the entry and exit of germ cells the third is the innermost region of integuments contains endothelium which help in the nourishment of the embryo sac after the fertilization the outer portion of these ovule or the integument or nucleus possesses cuticle now there are some plants such as castor bean from the family ricinus which has these micropylar regions to be get proliferated and converted into structure called as carankel this carankel has two functions the first is it absorb water and help in the germination of the seeds and second is it is made up of sugary substance and it helps in the dispersal which is occurred by the ants which means ants helps in these kind of dispersal from one place to another on the posi position of the basis of the ovule it has been divided into six forms the first is orthotropous second is anatropous third is hemianatropous fourth amphitropous campylotropous and the last one is known as circinotropous so let us discuss the first thing what is the basic difference and what is the diagram it is given there it has on the top micropylar end then it has two layers of integuments and in between there is embryo sac a nucleus the chalazal end and the funicle these body lies straight and directly over the funicle hilum chalaza and micropylar lie on the same line that is it is in erect position let us talk about the second thing anatropous which is also known as inverted this is the wide and is present in many flowering plants it has the body of ovule is inverted the ovule is fused with the funicle and the fusion of ovules with the funicle forms a rigid called as raphe the hilum and micropyle are close to the funicle the chalaza is on the end opposite to the micropyle and it is the most common type of ovule present so the next one is hemianatropous in which the body of ovule is placed at a 90 degree to the funicle as you can see it from the structures the fourth one is amphitropous in which the body of ovules and embryo sac are curved fifth one is campylotropous in which the body is curved but embryo sac is straight and hilum chalaza and micropyle come nearby the last one is known as circinotropous the ovule turns at more than 360 degree angle so the funicle become coiled around the ovule now i'll be talking about the anatropous which is inverted type in detail because it is the most common type so we'll be discussing this in detail form the detail diagram has been given under the right side of your image the first is we'll be talking about is the funicle what is the funicle the ovule is attached to the placenta by the means of a stack called as funicle which means it is just an attachment for the ovule to attach on something inside a flower the second is the hilum now what is hilum is 
it is the body of ovule fused in a region called as helum it is just a junction between the ovule and the funicle which means for the attachment of the funicle with the ovule it requires helum in between so that the junction can be created and as you can see it from the diagram where the helum is placed the third is rfa which is also known as ridge now what is ridge is it is formed over the fusion of funiculus with the body of ovule if you want to remove this you can easily remove this from your topics it's not that important in the next it is known as integuments now what is integument is each ovule has one or two protecting envelopes as we have already decided and learned that it has been divided into four types now integuments can be any it can be one it can be two it can be three it can be many and it cannot be there also so it depends on the integuments the next is micropyle these kind of integuments leave small openings at one end as we have discussed earlier which is known as micropyle end and this end is called micropyler and from which the sperm or the germ cells of the spores will come and germinate the next is chalaza end or the chalaza it is just the opposite side of the micropyler end and it represent the base which means the lowest portion of a flower on which the embryo or on which the ovule will develop the last thing is the nucleus now what is the importance of nucleus it is just the tissue which is enclosing all of the embryo sac which means embryo sac is kept inside nucleus and nucleus is covered by integuments of different layers so now let us discuss a part of ovule which is known as embryo sac which is also known as female gametophyte in detail the first is ovule obviously it contain a single embryo sac which forms a mega spore and that mega spore germinate one nucleated and seven celled structure which means one nucleus and seven celled structure total eight celled structure will be developed the second is the egg apparatus the egg apparatus is present on which side it is on the micropylar end and with this egg apparatus or with the egg there are two synergids which means two more cell which are known as synergids near the synergids there is filiform apparatus which is a special kind of thickening at the micropylar end which help in the guiding of pollen tube inside this ovule it also contain two haploid nuclei in the middle below the egg apparatus now from the diagram you can easily see it has two sides one is chalazal end and the second one is micropylar end on the chalazal end there is three celled which is known as antipodal cells in middle it is polar nuclei and in the lower portion there are three cells one is egg cell and two synergids and there will be apparatus known as filiform apparatus will which help in the guiding of pollen tubes so we have moved to the last topic of this chapter or the topic which is mega sporogenesis we have already learned about the micro sporogenesis in the formation of pollen grains these are the just the steps in the next slide from the diagram i'll be making you understand all the things clearly the first is the mega sporogenesis it is the formation of mega spore from the mega spore mother cell which is also known as mmc and this process is called as mega sporogenesis in this ovules commonly from a single mega spore mother cells in micropylar region of the nucleus this mmc is produced in the micropylar region of the nucleus it is a large cell and contains dense cytoplasm and different kinds of nucleus this mmc undergoes meiosis and forms four mega spores in majority of flower only one mega spore is functional and all the other three will degenerate only the functional mega spore will divide and form the female gametophyte this development of embryo sac from a single mega spore is called monosporic development so this was the steps now i'll be learning from the diagrammatic representation 
so that you can clearly understand how a mega spore is developed from an ovules now we'll talk about the diagrammatic representation of mega sporogenesis or how a embryo sac is formed in the first diagram it is the basic structure of what a mega sporogenesis will look like so at the micropyle end there is bunch of nucleus cells and around in middle of that nucleus cell there is one single mega spore mother cells from this mega spore mother cells which is known also known as mmc now a type of division will happen and that mega spore mother cell will divide into two and which will be called as a mega spore dyad dyad means two again this kind of division will happen and this two mega spore dyad will convert into four mega spore tetrads these four mega spore tetrads in which only one mega spore will be functional and all the other remaining three will ultimately degenerate this single mega spore will again divide into two cells and then two into four cells and ultimately resulting in the formation of an embryo sac in which there will be eight celled structure the on the chalazal end there will be antipodal cells three in quantity and on the micropylar end there will be three cells one is egg cell and two synergids and in middle there will be two polar nuclei present and the fluid will be known as central cell and on one end there will be filiform apparatus from which the entry of pollen grains will happen i hope you understood this diagram clearly now we will moving to the steps of the formation of embryo sac the step has already been studied in the previous image only so i'll just read out for you the first is the nucleus is the functional mega spore which undergoes mitosis and forms two nuclei now they move to the opposite poles thus the two nucleated embryo sac is formed these two nucleated embryo sac undergo mitotic nuclear division and leads to the formation of four nucleated and then eight nucleated stages of embryo sac in these kind of nuclear division there is no development of cell wall as in these stages after the eight nucleate stage has been completed the cell wall are laid down this lead in the organization of a typical female gametophyte or embryo sac in which there is dividation of the cells into different kinds the six of eight nuclei are surrounded by cell wall and are called as cells and the remaining two are called as nuclei which is also known as polar nuclei and are located just at the middle of the large center cell three cells which are present together at the micropylar end which has two things egg and synergids will be known as egg apparatus and this egg apparatus has two things two synergids and one egg cell the synergids have a special cellular thickening at the end of micropylar tip which is known as filiform apparatus they play a major role in guiding the pollen tubes inside the synergids for the fertilization three cells at the chalazal end is known as antipodal cells thus a typical angiosperming embryo sac has seven celled and eight nucleated at maturity so i hope you all have understood what is the formation and how a formation of embryo sac happens so we have discussed about the two topics in topic 1 we have discussed about the male reproductive part and in topic 2 we have discussed about the female reproductive part that's it for today's video i hope you have understood the topics very well but for more understanding i, I urge all of you to repeat this video again for clearer understanding if you like the video and its content give it a thumbs up and don't forget to comment your name in the comment section if you are unable to understand or is struggling in any of the topic please write the topic in the comment section i'll sure surely try to get to you soon so for more of such videos stay tuned to the channel stay safe stay healthy and don't forget to learn it